You are still watching Ways. Now, National Girlfriends Day is a special occasion dedicated to celebrating the remarkable bonds of friendship and love shared among women. It's a day to recognize and appreciate the incredible support, laughter, and understanding that the girlfriends bring into each other's lives. On this day, we take a moment to honor the sisterhood that empowers, uplifts, and inspires us in countless ways. It is celebrated on August 1st every year. Today is also World Wide Web Day, which is dedicated to commemorating the birth of the World Wide Web, or the internet as we call it, and recognizing its impact on the world. Mm. So let's start with girlfriends. This is a very significant day for yeah. me because I have some badass girlfriends <laughs> <laughs> in this life. I think I've been so blessed. Yeah, I was um, just about to say that, that I have been so blessed. Yeah, so, yeah. so blessed. So, so I, blessed. I think it's remembering to just remind yourself how blessed you are mm. and to celebrate them. So um, for me, I think I haven't called everybody, but it's been a long day, but I'm sure that my drive home, I'm just going to call all of them mm. and say, Happy National Girl Girlfriends Day. <laughs> so no matter have you wished anyone Happy Girlfriends Day, you know all the ladies, we are sending our love to you, mm -hmm. um, being so far away from us. So Happy National, special Happy National Girlfriends Day to you, Norma. So, um, uh, thank you so much, Uti. <laughs> So you can you can you can spread the love as well and reach out and wish everyone a happy happy um, girlfriend's, girlfriend's day national girlfriend's <laughs> day and of course I mean the internet has changed our lives right yeah. so you can't even Im I can't imagine what life I don't think I can remember what life was like before with, the internet with no life. actually I can remember but I don't think that I could cope living that life again without the internet I think that I'm I'm a Google ninja gotten to that point where I'm talking and I'm googling at the same I time. I just made everything yeah. Like everything is within your grasp. Your yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not sure that we could live without it. Mm. So that is certainly also a day worth celebrating. So Nama, I think I'll start with you. What did you find in the news for us? Okay. So I found something very disturbing, actually, on the news today. And it has to do with a cult mom who killed her children. And her sentencing was yesterday. She was sentenced to life in prison. So an Idaho mother in a doomsday cult has been sentenced to life in prison for murdering her two youngest children and conspiring in the murder of her husband's former wife. Her name is Lori Velo Daybell, and she is 50. She was found guilty of first-degree murder and multiple conspiracy charges in May, but she was sentenced yesterday. And um, she was she was said to have killed her son, who was um, seven, and her daughter, Tylee, who was 16. Their bodies were found buried in her husband's um, backyard, and... Um, this happened in 2020, but the trial continued. And on Monday, Judge Stephen Boyce sentenced uh, Valor to three consecutive life terms without parole. Now, the interesting thing for me was that this lady, um, even after this, for some reason, is not remorseful. She doesn't believe that she's done anything. In fact, she was said to um she she actually said that she was that jesus knows that no one was murdered in the case and that she sees the three victims they often visit her and they told her that she didn't do anything wrong now there's borderline probably i, I don't know there's some kind of mental situation going on as well of course, her husband is um, somebody who is uh, popular in some regard because he has written about uh, doomsday and um, apocalypse, things like that. He was said to have killed his wife, right? And um, both of them are charged. It's interesting. I mean, it's really, really heartbreaking when you hear stories like this about mothers who murder their children has i don't know it could be due to mental illness it could be due to anything but there are a lot of troubled people out there and um unfortunately they also have family that continue to be around them who may not even have a choice to be around them and may likely be victims when um their situation escalates 
um, this is just so heartbreaking for it me, is, is knowing very, that very children sad. are involved. Yeah. And when children are always involved, vulnerable children, it's it's very, very sad to hear. Mm. Um, well, justice has been served, I guess, in this situation. And I, I pray that the children rest in peace. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I, follow, I followed the story a bit. I found it quite distressing, but... For me, I think it just speaks to how powerful cults can be in manipulating yeah. the minds of people yeah. um, to, to actually be able, for a mother to be able to do that. That's just scary. Um, Jella, what did you find for us? Okay, um, so my headline is, um, Akbabio stops El Rufai from addressing strong petition on Kaduna insecurity. Um, well, the ex-Kaduna um, gov governor, that's um, El, El Rufai, yeah, he made the 28-man ministerial nominees of the President Bola Tinombo. And um, today, as part of his um, screening process, um, he was called into the Red Chamber. And um, um, El Rufai had mentioned that, um, you know, this would be his second time in the Red Chamber since he was screened and confirmed as an um, FCT uh, minister before. So... Um, I mean, in the midst of all this, um, Senator Abdulaziz Yari from Zanfara, West Senatorial District, asked El Rufai to share his plan on how to increase Nigeria's electricity generation and distribution if made the power minister. However, Senator Ibrahim Khalid from Kaduna Nuf, um quickly urged that um, El Rufai should take a bow without further questioning just as the upper chamber had done for ex-governors VK of Rivers and Dave Umayi of Eboy during their uh, ministerial screenings. Um, then, Senator Karimi Sunday from Kogi West subsequently took the floor and raised a very strong petition against El Rufai that bordered on insecurity, unity, and national cohesion. Um, even though Sunday had praised um, El Rufai's performance as Kaduna governor and FCT minister, he still, you know, um, he was still compelled to mention that, um, mm. you know, there was a lot of insecurity yeah. and all that. And then, um, I mean, it was recorded here that um, El Rufai made an attempt, you know, yes. to yeah to address the petition. However, the Senate president um, in the person of Akpabio said that um, distinguished colleagues, now I'm quoting, you know, perhaps I should inform you that I have received petitions from many other people in respect of other nominees, but this is not where we are to deal with petitions. Our job here is to screen and, of course, we can refer petitions to where petitions will be dealt with. Um, these are the nominees of Mr. President. If it is something that is a, a formal petition before the Senate, we will look at it formally. But there are certain petitions that we have to refer to the presidency or security agencies to look at, and this has nothing to do with us. So I think we would even dive into it further mm. because we'll, we'll come back to yeah, the conversation. Yeah, so I'll yeah. take my story very quickly. Okay. Um, and this speaks to, so this is almost like a breaking-ish story. It's only a couple of hours old, about four hours old. Um, so sometimes this afternoon, um, it says that four people narrowly escaped death after a helicopter crashed in the Oba Akran area of Ikeja in Lagos State. So this happened... Um, Close to, is reported, a branch of um, UBA, that's United Bank of Africa, and it was gathered, the chopper, the helicopter was, in, was used for training when it crashed um, into a building and went up in flames. Uh, the spokesperson for um, the agency, I believe that's La Sema, um, said occupants sustained varying degrees of injuries, but of course nobody died, so that's uh, a positive note from there. Um, and it was used at the time to train the four occupants of the um, on board at the time. So um, it's still very much a going concern. Uh, it's only a few hours old, as mm. I said, but we're glad that nobody died. Yeah. Um, and of course, we hope that they get the necessary medical care that um, they require. But I think we can take a quick break now and then we can dive right into the conversation. Please stay with us. <laughs> 